welcome to the first episode of this new series. In these videos I'll be making a Dawn of Justice style Batman suit. Uh, the idea behind this is this year, at the end of this month, I'm doing Tough Mudder again and I wanted to do it dressed up again like I did last year. Last year I did Superman. This year I think I'm going to do Batman but I don't really want to do it in one of the costumes I've got. One, because they're really big padded foam costumes and I won't be able to do any of the going underwater things because I'll be too buoyant. And two, I don't want to scratch up and damage my costumes. And the cowl for each one is made out of uh, like a hard plastic. And if I take a couple of knocks to the head, it'll crack and break that. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start off by making the new cowl, the Dawn of Justice Ben Affleck style cowl, out of uh, foam. So it'll be nice and soft, nice and lightweight. Um, it'll make me sweat a lot, I reckon, because the Captain America helmet I made out of foam now is uh, really thick. And it is a lot lot hotter to wear that than it is the plastic one I made but you know I'm just gonna have to man up and deal with it I suppose so I'm gonna be doing this with a pepper cura template I've found online and I'm gonna show you that now first of all what is pepper cura well it's Japanese for paper craft and it all starts when someone makes a 3d model of something in this case a Batman cowl this is based on the um, Dawn of Justice Ben Affleck style mask and then there's another process after that where they have to make it ready to be uh, all printed out and everything and the 3D model needs to be unfolded and edited in such a way that none of the uh, corresponding edges mix up a bit funny and blah blah blah. It's very very technical and I don't know how to do it but thankfully there are loads of people that do and what you end up with is a Pepper Cure file which is what I've got here and it's basically the 3D model split up in such a way that all of the pieces, like this piece here for example, the right side of the head is also shown in this window over here as this big piece and all these rectangles here are various pages it's going to take seven pages to print this some of them though will need to be done again to the other side of the mask so that would be this piece here this piece would be the back of the head here and you've got this piece which is the top of the head and basically you print them out and then you just basically stick them all together and then your printouts which are flat on paper then become this model in real life and it's a fantastic place to start to get a good basic shape of what you're trying to build and like the Batman mask here and then you just add whatever finishing touches you like. The main job you need to do is hide all of the seam lines which is quite tricky when you're working with foam, not so much when you're using cardboard and resin and stuff because you can use car body filler but it's a little bit more tricky when using foam which I'm going to be doing. So first thing I need to do is print this out. I've already scaled it to what I think is the right size to fit my head but we'll see, we won't really know until I've started to make it. Uh, I'll start most likely with the eye and temple area and then I can hold that part up to my face and if I can see through the eyes and my eyes are straight in those holes there, the eye holes, then it will probably onto a winner. However, if it's too big or too small, my eyes are maybe right in the middle here, which will make him look a bit cross-eyed or something, then I'll know straight away, almost, you know, that it's not quite the right size. So then it'll be back to the drawing board, resizing it in this software, printing it out and start it again. So I'm now going to print this. Just set the printer up to fast quality, black and white, save ink and then print that. Uh, it doesn't fit in the printer where it adjusts scale. No, you don't want to adjust the scale. I've spent time making sure it's the right size. Some of the parts do go over the page but it puts on the lines on each page so you know how to line it all up which is pretty good. So I'm going to click no on that and that's going to print out. So here are my pages all printed out. And you see that some of them, like this one, this piece here, disappears off of the page. But that piece, you can just line up the next page. You're going to have to cut the margin off first, though. And then just take that onto there, and then that'll be one big piece. And then do the same for this page here as well. There's only two pieces out of all of those that need that doing to them the rest of them fit on the page nicely 
So I'm going to cut those out with a pair of scissors and for the more fiddly bits use one of these craft knives. You don't have to use pepper cure files to make a Batman mask. You can make it freehand if you want to. I just think that as pepper cure is a tool that you can use, there's the someone's you know it's already gone and made the model and made the files for you to print out, why not use it? I mean some of the things I've made in the past have been pepper cure. My Captain America helmet, for example, my other Batman Master Pepper Cure, other things I've done just by freehand using reference images from the internet like the Hulkbuster, the Iron Throne, and the Tumblr. You can't get Pepper Cure files for the Tumblr, and even if you could, printing this mask takes seven pages. How many pages of paper do you think it would be to print a 15 foot long, 9 foot wide Batmobile? That'd be an insane amount of paper. It'd be like you need a whole forest of trees to do that sort of thing. It'd be crazy. So, yeah, it's not really suited for all projects, but like I say, it's a good place to start. Some of these pieces are going to need to be modified to be better with the foam I'm going to be using and to have as few seams as possible to have to sort out later. I'll show you what I mean by that when I'm cutting the foam out. Just going to join up the two pieces that have gone onto multiple pages. I'm going to take my knife and cut the margin off of this piece. just for some electrical tape. So I've got all my pieces cut out. These pieces here are for the bit that goes around the neck and shoulders, so I'm leaving that to one side for now. Because I'm going to have to make this in two separate pieces anyway, otherwise I won't be able to turn my head. So it's going to be slightly different to what it looks like in the movie, but it's going to have to be, otherwise it's going to be dangerous trying to jump over obstacles and climb up things if I can't turn my head. So I've got now these three big pieces now I'm going to need a little bit of modifying before I cut them out of foam. Uh, this piece is a bit that goes around the eye, which I'm not going to change because I want as much definition around the eyes as possible. Because I think that's one of the prominent features of a Batman mask. It needs to look menacing and scary, I think, so I'm not going to mess with the eyes. So what I mean by modifying these is this piece here, for example, is the side of the head. And I think this this seam here is unnecessary. If I was making this out of paper then fair enough because um, you can't bend paper in more than one way but you can with foam if you heat it so I'm just going to close this seam up with some tape which is going to give me the curve that it's, it wants for the final piece but then just press it down flat when I come to draw around it in the foam and then this curve that you can see now, I'll get that from the foam with a heat gun later on. So I'm going to do that to a couple of these as well. I'm not going to close all of this up because I don't think I'm going to be able to draw around it properly if I do. You never know, let me do the two bits I was going to do first. 
that is quite curved. I don't know whether I'll be able to get that much curvature out of a piece of foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like it is. I'm going to draw around it on a piece of foam and cut it out. Then I'm going to tape it together and draw around it on a piece of foam and cut it out and try and heat form it into the shape it wants to, to be in which is this shape. If it works, fantastic. If not, then I've got the one from drawing around this one. And this is the foam I'm using. It's an exercise mat I got from the pound shop. And I've got these. I've bought loads of these, actually. They don't usually have them in there this time of year. It's usually about New Year. Um, just after Christmas they have these, because that's when most people join the gym, don't they? You know, New Year, New Me, that sort of crap. So the pound shop usually has loads of loads and loads of foam mats, and they're really cheap. It's about five or six mil thick, and I think this one mat will do the whole mask. On this side, it's got a plasticky coating, which isn't really ideal, but what can you do, eh? For a quid, can't complain. These are pretty good for making things out of. Not so good for exercising on because they're crap, but you know, I'm not exercising on it, I'm going to make a Batman mask. So what we'll do now, is take some pins, so just upholstery pins, for doing sewing and stuff, and I'm going to take this piece, stick it down on there, and while I draw around it, I'm going to want it to not move about, so I'm just going to stick a few pins in it, see if it moves. Yeah, I won't get the lines where they need to be and it won't make the model right. Even if it moves by a few mil, there'll be gaps. So I'm now going to draw around that and then the next step we're cutting them all out. Cut out most of these pieces now with a knife. I'm not using the scissors because this foam is so thin the scissors might squish it on the edges and they won't all line up properly when I come to glue it. Right, so I've got my pieces cut out and while I was doing that my glue gun has been heating up. Uh, that piece I was talking about earlier, I've gone and stuck it together and drawn around it as best I can and I don't think it's going to work because it has come up a lot shorter than the one where I kept it separate. Even when you bend these over it's still it's not going to work. I don't think I can heat this and stretch it by about an inch, so it's going to have to have those seams, unfortunately. But oh well. So I'm now going to start sticking some of these bits together. I'm going to start with the eyes and the nose, I believe, and then I better put it on like a, a robin mask and see if my eyes line up correctly. And if they do, then I'll crack on with the rest. If not, then. All of this is a big waste of time and I'll have to rescale it and start again. So I've made the eye and face bit just to make sure it fits. Which it kind of does. I think the nose needs to come down a bit more because I can I can feel my nose underneath it, which is a bit of a bit of a pain because I've got to remake this bit now and hopefully remove this from the rest of this without damaging it. Uh, so I'll remake this piece here, adding on probably about 5mm or so to the bottom just to cover my nose a bit more. But yeah, I think on the whole it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to have to make these eyes a little bit bigger because it's hard to blink and it just feels a bit funny being this close to my, my face. But yeah, I think it's looking pretty cool. But I'm not going to do none of that until tomorrow because it's like 4am now. So yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Hello, so it's the next day and I'm now going to crack on with this mask. So what I need to do is make this piece again, make it a little bit lower, uh, make it come down a little bit lower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the piece I used to make that and I'm going to draw around it on this piece of paper. I'm going to add to the bottom of it. And that's now going to come down about there instead, which should cover my nose nicely. If that is a little bit too long, I can always trim it off afterwards. 
but I can't add any on because there'd be a new seam line which I don't want. So now I'm going to cut that out of foam and then take the old one off. So these are the new pieces cut out. And as you can see, they are longer than the original ones. So what you see now is join these together. If I join these two edges together like this, then it's going to make the bridge of the nose curved and I want it to have a slight angle to it. So I'm going to take my scissors and cut this at an angle. And then when you glue that to there, it'll be more pointy. Put glue. Whoops. No wonder they keep breaking. Keeps throwing them off the tables. Bit of tape on this just to hold the edges together. I'm going to get my heat gun and I'm going to try and remove the piece that is too small, which is this piece here. So, what I'm going to try and do that is to heat it from the back. Hopefully, that will soften the glue enough. Apart, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I don't think that's going to come apart. No, it's not. If I, oh, wait, here we go. So I'm doing this, I'm holding on to the piece of foam that I'm keeping because otherwise it'll end up stretching it. And it'll be all distorted. Well, that's come away quite nicely, actually. Well, I've got the new nose put on. Time to now do the forehead, which is this piece, only it's very flat. So to give that a bit of a curve, I'll take the heat gun, go to the glue gun again. Take the heat gun and heat the back of the foam. So it's almost almost there now. The nose is looking a lot better. The eyes, I am certain, are still too small. And I'm going to have to cut a bit out of the underside, I believe. I'm not going to do that till last. It's got one ear. I've made the other one. That's going to go on the other side, obviously. And I put a big slit up the back so I can get it on and off because my head wouldn't fit through this hole here. And that is most likely going to be secured with Velcro. Right, so I've added a strip of Velcro at the back. It's a bit different than the way my other Batman cows go together. They have a section cut out at the back here that hinges up and Velcro tabs at the bottom, but this won't work on this design because it's flexible. If it just stuck together at the bottoms, then the edges will all pop out and it'll look horrible. Right, all I've got to do now is make this eye a bit bigger. I've already done this one. Just got to do this one and then it'll be done. Ready for painting, I hope. That is provided that I'm cutting these eyes out to the right size. There we go. Yeah, they look a lot more symmetrical. Let's try it on. Gonna have to excuse the beard. happy with that, it looks pretty Batman-y, as I think you'll agree. Time to get the black spray paint out, but first I'm going to heat seal it, and then just go over the whole thing. Thank you. 
and it's all done. The seams on the brow area around the face didn't quite smooth out as well as I'd hoped, but as I'm only going to be wearing this for Tough Mudder anyway, it doesn't really matter that much. It looks okay. I'm happy with it. I will probably revisit the uh, cowl and do it a lot better in a future video. But for now, that's that done. Uh, I've also done the neck as well. I painted that and that is now drying. So I'll post pictures up of that when that's all done. Only thing left to do now is to just try it on. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got a little bit too much beard, really, to pull it off. But um, this isn't a real beard anyway. I'll just rub it off. Oh, that's better. Right, now, yeah, let's put this on. So, Batman mask made using the Pepe Cura method. Pretty simple, very cheap, and does the job. And that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll be working on the forearms and most likely the belt while I'm waiting for my morph suit to arrive. So until then, goodbye. Yeah.